Welcome to another Method Man Productions episode. Today's lesson will be about solving formulas. These are also called literal equations. To me, all of that sounds fancy. You're just solving for a specific variable when you're solving for a formula. For example, one, we're solving for m. That means I want to have m all by itself or m equals something. Use the same rules as you would with a regular equation. There are m's on both sides. I'm just going to start off with the right. Since that m term is bigger than the one to the left, you'll end up avoiding negative answers later on. This problem is very similar to the equations with variables on both sides. Since I have m on this side, I want to gather up all my m terms on the right. So start off by subtracting two m's on both sides. Now calculate 2m minus 2m, those cancel out, 3x drops straight down, equals 6m minus 2m, that's just 4m, and this 5 we didn't touch, that just drops straight down. My second step will be to get rid of this 5 by subtracting a 5. Here's the catch, I have to do it on both sides, but I cannot subtract it from this 3x and put that right under it, because these are not like terms. When that happens, just put it aside just like that. Negative 5, we didn't touch it, can't do anything with it. That just drops straight down. This 3x also drops straight down. Since this 3x was positive, there has to be a symbol in between these two terms. So we're going to put a plus right there. 4m, we didn't touch, that drops straight down. And the 5 and a negative 5, those cancel out. If a number is next to a letter that's being multiplied to that variable, 4 times m. To undo that 4, same exact rules as your other equations. Divide it by 4. The only difference is that each term on the left has to be divided by 4. Some of your teachers are fine with leaving your answers as a fraction, as long as you simplify it. Or, if you want to take it a step further, you can turn these fractions into decimals by just dividing them. Negative 5 divided by 4, that's negative 1.25. 3 divided by 4 is 0.75x. That was a positive 0.75x. And the 4s cancel out, and you're left with an m. Since m is all by itself and m equals something, your equation is solved, and you can stop right there. Example 2, solve for R. Oh my goodness, why is the whole alphabet on this problem, Mr. Silva? We're not in an English class. It's probably what you're saying right now if you feel a little discouraged. But don't get scared, these are not that bad. This one's a little different from example 1, and you'll see what I mean by it. We're solving for R. Start off by making a T-chart. And there are R's on both sides. I'm just going to start on the left. From this point, it doesn't really matter where you start. If I want my R terms right here, let's bring this SR to the other side. You're questioning, well, how do I do that? If you want to be less confused, I always tell my students to sneak in a 1 in front of variables with no coefficients. To cancel out a 1SR, you can subtract 1SR on both sides. Ask yourself, are any of these two terms alike? No, they're not. Just put it aside. Exactly. From this point, just start calculating things. Negative 1 SR we didn't touch, so that just drops straight down. The 2R, we also didn't touch that, so the positive 2R drops down. Negative H, if you want to make it less confusing, again, you can sneak in that 1 right there. That drops straight down. Equals... The 1SR minus 1SR, we canceled those out, and I'm left with a 4 on the right side. If I only want terms of R on the left side, you're going to want to get rid of this negative 1H by adding a 1H. Can I add a 1H to this 4? No, you can't. They're not like terms. I'm just going to put that aside. And now let's calculate. Negative 1SR, we didn't touch. That drops straight down. 2R, we didn't touch. That drops straight down. Negative 1H, positive 1H, those cancel out. 
the 4 drops down and the positive 1 H drops down. From this point, I guarantee a lot of people are getting stuck. What the heck do I do now? There's R right here and an R right here. How in the world can I have that all by itself? There's a fancy thing called factoring. If each of these terms have an R, you can pull them out. It's kind of similar to the distributive property, but it's backwards. If I take out an R and factor that out, I'm left with a negative 1s inside and a positive 2. If I use the distributive property, you end up getting what you had on the top. So that's just backwards of the distributive property. Set that equal to the other side, 4 plus 1h. When a number is next to parentheses, this is really multiplication. You can even divide by multiple terms as long as they're in parentheses. So to get rid of this negative 1s plus 2, since it's being multiplied, you can divide by negative 1s plus 2 to both sides. Wow, this problem is getting too long. It looks like an English paper. However, we're almost done from here, so hang on. Don't, don't start falling asleep on me. The negative 1s plus 2s, they cancel out. The R just drops straight down. And I can't do anything to simplify this, so you just have to rewrite it. 4 plus 1h over negative 1s, or negative s if you don't want to write that 1, plus 2. Example 3, solve for p. You want to have p all by itself. And a little hint before you try this problem on your own. You cannot get rid of negative 2 as your first move. Please pause the video and try out the problem below. When you have finished, check your answers and maybe you'll get a little lucky and get it right. I'm just kidding. I'm pretty sure you will. Here is the answer. To the first step is to get rid of the m. Since this is multiplication, divide by m on both sides. You're left with a p minus 2 equals negative 4 over m. The next step I did was to add a 2 to both sides. Since I can't add a 2 to this term, I just put it aside. p equals negative 4 over m plus 2 as your answer. Depends on your teacher. Some teachers might accept this answer, some might not. If you want to learn how to simplify this even further, here's a little lesson to the right. I'm not going to elaborate on that too much because it's a whole different lesson by itself. But to sum it up, you just have to find a common denominator and put them together. The steps are right here if you are very curious. Before I end, please subscribe to Method Man 20 for more math lessons.